there are three important zones of neck let us see there are three important zones of neck at the level of at the level of sternum or you can say at the level of clavicle subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder so now we when we have started the unit of trauma the next chapter in the uh, unit of trauma is neck injury neck injury if we talk about neck injury this is a very very important topic very important topic let us see that the neck injury the concept of neck injury starts with the zones of neck so let us see what are the zones of neck what are the zones of neck there are three important zones of neck let us see there are three important zones of neck at the level of at the level of sternum or you can say at the level of clavicle so at the level of sternum at the level of clavicle up to the cricoid up to the cricoid we have one zone from the cricoid up to the angle of mandible up to the angle of mandible we have another zone so angle of mandible is one and this is the cricoid this is the cricoid that we have yes so this is one zone this is another zone zone 2 and zone above this this is known as zone 3 let us see what they are actually so zone 3 this is up to the occiput or you can say base up to the base of skull base of skull so let us see what are the zones from the level of sternum up to the cricoid we have zone 1 from the level of cricoid up to the angle of mandible we have zone 2 above the angle of mandible we have the zone 3 up to the base of skull now if you see one classical similarity between zone 1 and zone 3 is that some part of zone 1 and some part of zone 3 is hidden behind a what bony cage and hence surgical explorations in these zones are very 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 cumbersome why because you need a sternotomy for zone 1 mandibulotomy for zone 3 and thus this is very important and this needs to be kept in mind when we are planning intervention now again let us talk about the types of injury in the neck in the neck you can have a blunt injury in neck you can have a penetrating injury when will you tag this injury to be penetrating when will you tag this injury to be penetrating try to understand any injury which negotiates through the superficial cervical fascia into the deep cervical fascia will be classified as penetrating injury so what is penetrating injury by definition this is by definition this is a penetrating injury so any injury any injury which penetrates which penetrates through the skin subcutaneous tissue and what is the last layer it's a platysma so breach of platysma breach of platysma is an indication for this is an indication for or this is diagnostic of penetrating injury so this is diagnostic of penetrating injury so breach of platysma breach of platysma is very 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 important let us try to see what are the important things associated with neck injury do you know whenever there is injury in the neck there are three things which comes into our mind it could be it could be injury involving it could be injury involving uh, the trachea it could be injury involving the your uh, esophagus it could be injury involving the vascular structures what did i say vascular structures do you know injury to trachea or esophagus the patient can still survive for maybe one day or maybe 6 to 12 hours but injury to the vascular structures the patient will compromise with the life then and there only so it's very important to rule out the vascular injury now what are some important signs which may be suggestive of a vascular injury and these signs are known as hard signs or maybe the soft signs let us see so what are the hard signs 
what are the hard signs and what are the soft signs of neck injury hard signs of neck injury what do you mean by the hard signs they are visible visible bleeding visible bleeding a visible bleeding second is expanding hematoma expanding hematoma third is pulsatile hematoma students pulsatile means what this is a hematoma which is associated with arterial injury so it may be pulsatile maybe it could be due to pseudo aneurysm also so pulsatile hematoma pulsatile hematoma yes patient in shock neck injury and the patient is in shock so expanding hematoma pulsatile hematoma visible bleeding all these are heart signs what do you mean by heart signs they are the direct signs indicating a vascular injury let us see the indirect signs so they are known as soft signs soft signs doesn't mean that patient is out of risk they are indirectly indicating soft signs if you talk about soft signs what are the soft signs we have we have hoarseness of voice we have hoarseness of voice hoarseness of voice strider hoarseness of voice strider altered sensorium altered sensorium so these are signs which are suggestive of what indirectly they are suggestive of ongoing what was vascular trauma or something serious so these are hard signs and soft signs let us see how we manage them let us see how we manage them next if we talk about this whenever you have a patient of neck injury whenever you have a patient of neck injury the next thing that you check is whether the patient is whether the patient is unstable or stable unstable or stable the moment you have a call that this patient is unstable what is the next thing that you are thinking about to thinking about the vascular injury that might have occurred and you are tempted to go for surgical option and before you are going for surgical option i called you and said where are you going you said no sir don't don't waste the time i said yes you should remember don't waste the time so tell me where are you going sir there is a patient of so and so unstable neck injury i asked him what zone he said why it matters i said really it matters because a single incision and you are into the neck but if it is a zone 1 and zone 3 you need a bony resection also mandibulotomy sternotomy which is not that common commonly done and it's a time consuming process you might lose the patient by then so zone wise approach has to be formed here if it is a zone 2 you go for urgent neck exploration urgent neck exploration if it is a zone 1 if it is a zone 1 so if it is a zone 2 urgent neck exploration if it is a zone 1 or zone 3 what is the first task the first task is to buy some time by controlling the bleeding yes and how you can do this how you can buy some time it is ngo embolization ngo embolization so ngo embolization is done and if ngo embolization fails you go for urgent neck exploration you have to go for majority of the time it might not be able to stop the bleeding but it at least slows down the bleeding and gives you some time this is what now if it is a case of stable patient if it is a stable patient what is the next thing that you do yes you follow a no zone approach no zone approach a very famous question no zone approach what do you mean by no zone you don't give priority to any zone and that is why you go for ct scan and to that you add angiography also ct angiography so that you can enhance the evaluation of what vascular structures now this on ct angiography you will check for injury either the injury could be no absent no injury so observation if the injury is yes then the next task is ct guided angioembolization 
So intervention you will do by doing angioembolization. Angioembolization. If angioembolization fails, if angioembolization fails, what is the next thing that you need to do? Yes, you need to go for surgical exploration. Surgical exploration. Surgical exploration. This is what is the problem. Let us move forward now. Let us move forward. So this is, that is very important. There is a category of injury which is associated with blunt trauma. So blunt trauma, if you talk about, we have BCVIs. BCVIs. What do you mean by BCVI? Blunt cerebro, cerebro vascular injuries. Blunt cerebro vascular injury. So let us talk about blunt cerebro vascular injuries. Let us talk about blunt cerebro vascular injury. If we talk about blunt cerebro vascular injury, we have a grading system. We have a grading system and that grading system is very famous and has been asked. I think it was 2018 AIMS MCH or 20, 2019 MCH entrance where they have asked the name. It's Denver's scale or Denver's grading. Denver's grading. Denver's grading is also known as Biffle's grading. Biffle's grading. Denver's grading is also known as Biffle's grading. Let us talk about this Denver's grading. There are five grades. Grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4, grade 5. Now, if you talk about what is grade 1. Grade 1 is intraluminal, intraluminal thrombosis. Intraluminal thrombosis or raised intimal flap or raised intimal flap so intramural thrombosis or raised intimal flap with less than 25 percent stenosis with less than 25 percent stenosis grade 2 is same thing with more than 25 percent stenosis Grade 3 is pseudoaneurysm. Grade 4. Grade 4 is 100% 100 obliteration. And grade 5 is transaction. Transaction. Do you know as the grade increases, the chances of collapse also increases. Now try to understand grade 5 that is transaction. The chances of survival for major vascular like carotid artery transaction. The chances of survival only 5% or maybe less than that. So this is what is Denver's grading or scaling. 